Hello everyone. This is a quick video showing how you would use either essentials or enthusiast to fix the jump stitches with a lettering object, such as this monogram. What do I mean fix the jump stitches? Well, if you look at the monogram that's here on the left, it's the same monogram, except the one on the right has been edited. The one on the right, when you type on it, do you see the extra, those are actually not jumps. Those are needle downs. So when the digitizer actually created this and mapped it to a BX file, or you mapped an, a collection to a BX file and every single design had those stitches in it, it's, there's nothing that you can do in the software automatically to fix it. You have to actually go through each letter and adjust it in the software. So this quick, easy solution is maybe contact the digitizer to see if they have a BX version that looks more like the one on the right, which doesn't have those centering extra locking stitches in there. So if you want to fix them yourself, it's not difficult. You're just going to, have to do this every time you use that font. So let's pop into the software and check it out. So here I have, this is a, an alphabet design that I created or I mapped from a design collection that I purchased um, from Etsy. So I don't even remember where I got it from. It's an old font. But the step number one is that you want to adjust any spacing, anything with this lettering tool, the properties pane that I'm <laughs> scooting out in front of. You want to adjust all everything here because once we do whatever stitch editing we're going to do to it, this is... If as soon as you touch this again, it's going to regenerate those stitches. So based upon the alphabet, it pulls in. So you're not fixing the alphabet forever. You're just fixing it in this one design. So let me, um, just to leave this here or show you, I'm just gonna make a copy and a paste and move it over so that we have two to work with. Now, just for, so to keep things simple, I'm going to select this one so that we have the two and we're going to just change the color on it so that we can go through our um, our uh, list a little easier. Our our we're going to do two two different ways. The first way is I'm going to use the sew simulator to do that. It, this is an essentials function, so I'm going to do essentials and enthusiast. So do you see these two little stitches here? These are actually jump stitch. They're not jump stitches. They're walking stitches, centering stitches, whatever you want to call them. So let's use our sew simulator, which is up here at the top. And we're going to skip through the black because that's the one that's on the left and look at the one that's on the right. Now, as you walk through this, you see how it's already started. I'm watching the crosshair here and it puts the needle down. It does a couple stitches and then it starts stitching that diamond. So we want to get rid of those few extra stitches at the front. To do that, we have to get to the very last, there's nothing we can do here in the object pane because it's a one object. We need to create an object. Let me get to that last stitch over there that, that has these few stitches in it. So we can actually hit the delete key on our keyboard. So I need to use the green, the blue arrows here and get to the very last stitch one. So it puts the locking stitch here. One, two, three, and see how it starts backing up? That means it's going, that's part of the design. These are the stitches I want to remove. So when I get to the very last stitch of the stitches I want to move, that's where I want to put a stop in so that I have the stuff I want to get rid of and then the stuff I want to keep. That's when you click on the stop sign, go up here to our thread color list and choose any color you want that's not the same as what was there. Now, when you expand your, your color list here, you have the yellow, that was the original stitches, and you can hit the delete key on your keyboard. So when you're adding a stop in there, it automatically removes them for you. We're gonna have to do the same thing here and get to the very last stitch of our triangle. So if you, I used a little slider thing here to move over, but I'm going to back up till I get to the very last stitch. And if I put the stop sign on and choose a different color that tells the software, Hey, I want to stop here. And you notice those extra stitches are gone because it's not, they actually weren't necessary. There was nothing 
there was only two stitches left. So the software actually turns them into a jump stitch for you. So you don't have to do anything else. If you, if it, if you had even have a choice, either you would have to add them in or <laughs> you either delete them or the software does it for you because of the ending stitches. You wouldn't have a design that just had one, two stitches in it. It just deletes them for you. So you would have to do that for every single instance here in, in the design using the sew simulator and adding color stops. Just remember to use colors that are in your design so that you can actually select them and hit the delete key. Now, if you have enthusiast, that is this stitch editing button here. Things are a little different because when you are in stitch editing, we're going to work on the first one here at the top. I'm going to move on over. If you look at it, I can actually see the needle points in the design. So if I left click on that long thread that's between them and right click on it, I can bring up a pop pop-up menu that says, Hey, I want that thread to be turned into a jump stitch and put tie offs on either end of it. So when I choose that option, do you see how it disappeared? Because it basically turned that one stitch into a locking stitch. Now a jump stitch with locking stitches at the end. If you can you actually see on this one here, you can't do that because you actually have two little stitches here. So, I mean, there it's a, you'd have to do it twice and it would still end up putting the extra stitches there. So in suppose when you have two little dots or needle points here, that's where you use your lasso. So I'm going to lasso these two so that they're highlighted, left click on them and move them over to where they belong. So basically I've, I'm relocating those stitches. Moving over by using the pan key, the same, I can look at here. Do you see this one has three stitches? So it has two here and three here. I could actually select this one and hit the, I'm have just clicked on that one and hit the delete key on my keyboard. Lasso these two. I mean, I could delete them, but why not move them to where they belong here in the design so that they're where they should be. This one is just one stitch. So I'm going to left click on it, right click on it. At the bottom, say jump and ensure ties. And I think there was one more here at the top. I'm using my space bar. Ah, there's a, an extra stitchy guy right here. So I'm going to move him over to here and it's already set to a jump stitch. So now I have none of those wonky stitches left, left in my new design, but it's all two, it's two different colors. So if I collect, select my design, Click on the one color button here at the top, choose a color, change them all to that one color, save my design. And that's how you get rid of or fix a design that has extra stitches in it and change it into the one that doesn't. Hopefully you found that interesting. Take care. Bye.